Thanks. Uh, good evening, everyone. Um, I'm going to, just a quick overview here, I'll talk a little bit about uh, an immersive economy and the, the new interaction modalities that we see emerging in the coming years. I'll then talk about how we enable those VR and AR experiences, both in terms of hardware, uh, headset viewers, and then in software, how we, how we build for that. Uh, I'll then describe the four primary uh, immersive experiences and before I demonstrate how we can uh, implement one of those experiences using JavaScript, using web technologies. Um, and that's when I'll, I'll uh, reach the immersive photograph demo and we'll just allow for some questions at the end. So this slide, this slide is pretty packed, but basically what this is saying is that the, the key points here, augmented reality and VR spending, projected to hit uh, $150 billion by 2020. Um, and, you know, what that means is, it, you know, I, like uh, a lot of people in this space, uh, believe that, that this is going to happen, and it's a new um, paradigm, a new uh, development in, in human-computer interaction, in the same way that mobile computing was, and or even other existing media that we have, like uh, print media and recorded audio and so on. In the bottom right-hand corner there, there's a, a LinkedIn article I, I wrote uh, a while back uh, that outlines some of those views. Uh, one of the points here actually is that augmented reality is projected to, to form the lion's share of that entire market by 2020. Something like 80% uh, is pro projected to be augmented reality. Um, so these are just some of the headsets here. I've got a couple uh, myself here. If anybody wants to look at any of this content later on, I've got a, a Google Cardboard and then a Gear VR viewer. Uh, we see there Dacry augmented reality headset. Oculus Rift is, is maybe the most well-known. And then this HTC Vive uh, product that'll be out this side of Christmas. That's a, a very interesting uh, device, uh, very powerful capabilities. And then Google Cardboard, people may have, I'm sure many of us are familiar with that. It's sort of the low end of the, the spectrum. It's to enable you to get this kind of experience using your existing hardware, your existing smartphone. Um, so I mentioned earlier these uh, four types uh, of immersive experiences. Um, so we've got immersive photograph, immersive video, 3D graphical, and augmented reality. Um, so I'll just show you quick uh, examples of these kinds. So this is a, a photograph that we can uh, move around inside here. I'm sure people are, are familiar with that. Um, if we want to enable this in a, in a headset, we need to do something else that I'll, I'll refer to in a minute. That basically, we need to allow a stereoscopic vision, uh, so side by side, one for each eye. Um, so that's the first, uh, the, the second uh, type is just um, immersive video. So it's the same concept, just with, uh, just with moving images and audio. Um, so YouTube have very recently um, started uh, enabling this kind of content on their platform. So I can, I can um, scroll around like that. Uh, yeah. So that's YouTube just, just about a month ago. There's a lot of uh, activity in this whole space, you know, and everyone from, from Google to GoPro to everyone's involved in this, you know. Um, so uh, so the, the third type here then is 3D graphical. Um, so this is, you know, this is akin to a, a computer game uh, model, you know, we're all familiar with, with this kind of uh, model. Um, and then the fourth and final one here is uh, augmented reality. So, you know, I say there that existing mainstream deployment, um, it's maybe more advanced that there is augmented reality content out there and it has been there for a couple of years. So this is um, Dacry's product, for example. So uh, this is the smart helmet. Um, we won't watch the whole video here, but I think most people are uh, familiar with augmented reality uh, concepts. So that has a lot of sensors in there and, and so on. 
Um, so, uh, so yeah, the, I mentioned earlier about that. That's we've re quickly reviewed the hardware. And there, by the way, that's that's not exhaustive at all. Uh, Microsoft have a HoloLens product. Um, Google have acquired a startup called Magic Leap. Again, it's an augmented reality. Uh, Sony have Morpheus. There's you know tons and tons of headsets out there already. Most are pre-consumer release. So the Oculus, for example, isn't out uh, consumer release until quarter one, 2016. Uh, but I just want, without going into too much detail, basically if you want to build software for this, you've got a, a whole load of choices here. Um, there, uh, Unity, on the native side, so I'll, I'll get back to the web in a minute, but on the native side you've got all of these options here. Unity has emerged as a common platform uh, for, for lots of different headsets. Oculus have their own SDK based on that. Uh, Steam VR is with uh, HTC Vive. And then you've got a whole platform issue as well. Like if you're running something it, using a Google Cardboard, do you go Android or iOS or one or the other um, and so on. So I suppose th the point I'm trying to get here is we, we, we're all familiar with this and we're, we're all JavaScript um, advocates here. And we've got, had this debate going on now for for many years, it seems about you know native versus web, and which is better, and which is easier, and which is cheaper, and so on. So that that in some ways that same conversation is happening with VR as well. So somebody like there's a, there's a web VR initiative, for example, and that's spearheaded mo by Mozilla. So they feel, and a lot of people feel, that the web is the ideal platform to enable cross uh, device development. You know. And uh, a lot of other people, of course, disagree with that, that to, to get the, the um, discrete sensor uh, movements, for example, and the, the high graphics, the, the 40 frames per second that you need on a high polygon count that you need to go native with that kind of thing. But I suppose what I'd like to show today is that we can develop uh, with JavaScript in here. So, I mentioned earlier the, this notion of an immersive photograph. I showed the example of, of Marion Square earlier. So it's a 360 degree static photorealistic image. We can augment it uh, with audio, uh, again, using HTML5 and using uh, in-browser audio capabilities. Um, so I suppose we need to just think a little bit about how we enable that and what, what are the components here. So there's a thing called... Um, equirectangular uh, projection. So that's basically where we take a, a photograph and it's, it's rendered in a, a flat, uh, these, this is just a generic uh, image search here, but what we do is we, we take a, a flat photograph and we render it in a particular way so that if we depict that uh, photograph on, on something spherical on inside a sphere that it'll, it'll appear It'll give the uh, illusion of presence, I suppose, of telepresence. So uh, that's the kind of photo um, that we need, you know, to, to enable this. Uh, the other thing here is stereoscopic view, and 3JS is a great library. I'm sure a lot of us are, are familiar with it, and uh, well, I know that a lot of us are familiar with it. So this, in, uh, I'll, I'll show an example of this in a minute, but we can very easily harness. Uh, the capabilities of 3JS to enable a stereoscopic view. Um, the third part here is uh, sensory detection. So there's a device orientation API that we can harness. So if you, if you think about it, if we've got our phone in our Google Cardboard, we need to figure out when people are, are moving around and that allows us then to, to project the correct experience for them. Uh, and then I just have down there optional HTML5 audio offline storage and so on, like we may want to, to do that. Uh, it's, it's more, uh, if we're dealing with larger media formats like video, it can, it can make sense for us to pull down that video and then render it when, when it's down. Um, so, uh, so, yeah, like what if, I suppose, the, the first issue there, if we wanted to uh, create um, the equirectangular photo, um, most phones now, if you've got a, you know, uh, 
a Android 5 phone, for example, you'll get, you can use your stock, your Google camera uh, app to create a photo like this. So I was going to maybe create it here, but I, I don't think I'll bother with that. But what I'll do is I'll, I'll just show you the, the process here. So if you can see that, I'm just using the standard photo and I'm working my way around and, and creating that um, equi-rectangular photo. Um, so like I say, you don't need any, um, any special software or anything for that. Uh, well, um, so, uh, yeah, maybe what I'll do quickly here then is show you quick, uh, a code sample. So I'll bring up the, um, very quickly, hang on. So, thanks. So, okay, so I mentioned some of these aspects before. So the three, so, so we've got our, our, uh, our, we've created our equi-rectangular photo here. So that's our, our raw material. So then in terms of uh, the other aspects that I mentioned, um, where is it? Uh, no, I'm looking for, there's an emulator here. Well, first of all, uh, where is it? Oh, yeah, thanks. Uh, no, that's not it. Um, it's, there's an emulator tab somewhere. Uh, okay, well, you, um, it, you know there's an emulator thing that I can console? This one? Is that, is that one? Yeah, the Nexus 8 from here. Yeah. But there's another tab here. Device off. No. Uh, oh, I can't remember where it is here. Anyway, you can see there's um, the stereoscopic view. Um, and I'll just quickly show you the, uh, the code here um, without going into too much detail. Um, so there are a couple of parts uh, to this. Can people see that? Um, so this, it's, it's really not a lot of code for us essentially here. We're, we're, calling, we're referring to the 3JS library. We're setting up a, a new three scene there. And then we're... Uh, we're pulling in our, uh, the, this mesh material, which is the image, the, the equi-rectangular image. So we're creating um, a sphere here, and then we're just applying that, like I said earlier, applying that equi-rectangular image to the inside of the sphere. And then we're placing the user in the center of that sphere. Uh, and, and that's all we're doing. And the, uh, yeah. That's essentially it. Now, what I'd like to show you is, and th this is just audio stuff and so on, um, there is a way here that I can emulate the, the sensors to show you that it's working. Uh, uh, where the hell is it? Yeah. Um, oh, yeah. Yeah, that's it. Well done. Somewhere down there. Yeah, go here. Yeah, that's it. And you've got some sort of Great, perfect. So, uh, yeah, so if I can, if you can see that image there, if we en enable this accelerometer here, I'm, I'm basically just simulating if the user is wearing the, the phone in a, a VR viewer and then moving that around. Um, so that's, uh, that's pretty much that. So uh, how do we get back to this thing? Oh, yeah. Okay, so, um, so yeah, there are, you know, there are other aspects here as well. So of the photorealistic content, there's the image and the, the video. Um, there are unique, uh, you know, challenges to, to all of these. There's the 3D graphical 
and the aug augmented reality. Um, so uh, I won't I won't show you you those, but uh, for the immersive video, we've um, been involved in a lot of creation for that. So for video, if you think about it. Um, it's not, you can't create video with a standard uh, smartphone camera. So you need, um, if we have a camera here, we need to, to create live action video. We need a, a, a cameras arranged in a cube arrangement. So we need one for the ceiling, one for the floor, and then one for the four walls. So we've worked on these various prototype cameras to create and to stitch together uh, content like that. And maybe that's something I, I maybe could talk about another time, but I, I just wanted to show the photos here earlier. Um, and I showed an example, I showed the YouTube example earlier. But um, so that code anyway, if anybody wants to have a look at it, is up on GitHub. I meant to uh, create a node module, I haven't got around to that yet. But um, that, that's pretty much it for now anyway. Any questions? So what, um, so what sort of commercial applications, like outside of gaming and kind of, do you see this being used for? Um, well, that's a good question. I mean, the gamers are the early adopters here. There's no doubt about that. Uh, but I would envisage that it's, it's uh, applicable across all industries education, entertainment, communication. I think it's going to revolutionize uh, all of those fields um, in ways that, that maybe are difficult to predict now. Um, like the, you, you can see there that I, you know, a lot of the thinking we've been doing is that we think it could be applied to tourism, uh, for example, with the Merrion Square and so on. Um, and another early adopter, we see it as being a media, like marketing agencies. There have been some small, uh, smaller campaigns, still big companies. Volvo ran a campaign recently using branded Google Cardboard, for example. But it might happen that you know you get a mega, a huge brand, Coca-Cola or something, maybe give away the viewers with a, a can of Coke, and, and I think that could, you know, really get the ball rolling in the marketing domain anyway. But I think very quickly it'll. You know, education is a huge thing as well, and uh, a lot of people feel that, you know, uh, the millennial generation will be very open and very comfortable with this kind of technology, and I think that'll have a, a big effect as well as they get older. Um, just to hijack another question. Um, so the, all that hardware you showed there, can that be used with, like, kind of web 3G, or is that kind of locked down to those specific devices that they connect to or um, like another not out yet but is that the idea that you can use with any kind of 3G? Or uh, most or of them aren't locked down so most of them you can have a full web browser experience you know and I suppose you know there are a lot of people working on web VR that, that want to drive that to make sure that that happens for the the traditional benefits of the web the openness and the you know, portability across platforms. But um, no, in my experience so far, it still seems quite open. You can develop native or, or you can develop for web. Okay, so there's, uh, there are many uh, input devices now being developed for uh, VR devices basically what which do you think is the most promising for the web because it's very hard to choose between leap motion and all the other ones that are promising any kind of interaction google cardboard is not the most uh, interactive device we would say yeah um yeah i i know it's not the most interactive device but i still love the i you know i've tried um lots of different headsets now and some are, are very powerful and but I, I love the idea, the accessibility of something like Google Cardboard. Um, just that it's, it's harnessing what you've already got and it's basically disposable, you know, it's free. And I suppose maybe if, if this happens, as we predict that it might by between now and 2020, I suspect that there could be, you know, hundreds of millions of people 
experiencing VR and AR for the first time using something like cardboard. Um, I think cardboard is still very early. They just released a couple of months ago uh, version two with some improvements on it. But I think that whole idea will evolve, you know. I mean, the other great benefit of cardboard is that it's mobile, it's not tethered. So the HTC that I mentioned on Oculus, you need a, a good computer, you know, and you need not just that, but you have to be tethered to the computer. And uh, again, it's a huge bonus if you can try this thing anywhere, you know, as you can with your phone. Thank you. Yeah, sure, thanks. How hard interact uh, in, uh, with content inside, let's say, cardboard? Because usually you just look uh, some image or video and you can investigate around. But uh, let's say you have some control or button. How it's simple or hard to develop some interaction with user inside cardboard? Yeah, well, that's a good question. I mean, interaction with VR and AR is a huge area on its own. and. Again, it's still, so, you, so you've got various things. Once you build VR or AR, there are certain things you, you need to be able to do. So you need to be able to select things, you know, if you're presented with a range of options. But you also need things like um, locomotion, you know, especially if you've got a 3D graphical world, you need to be able to move around inside that world. So that's, a, that's an evolving language itself. It, a lot of, you know, we're all still trying to work out, do we use voice input, do we use gaze detection? Do we use, like you say, an external controller? And I think that's going to take some time for people to figure out what works in, in what context. Uh, but it is a challenge. Um, yeah. Thank you. Thanks. Any others? Oh, thanks, Stephen. Oh, oh, hang on. One more. One more. <laughs> thanks. Thanks for waiting. Um, so how high or low do you think the barrier to entry is? In, so basically I'm a developer and if I wanted to start dabbling in this area or like experimenting, because I, I don't work in this area, never used 3.js before, what do you think, how hard or easy it is to get into it's, it? it? Well, I suppose that the message I, I was, I'm trying to give tonight, I'm not sure how effective it was, but it is very easy actually. It's probably a lot easier than, than people think and especially if you've got um, it, a background in 3JS, um, it, what I'd advise you to do is go onto Amazon or get Google Cardboard if you haven't already got it for, you know, five or ten euro. And uh, then just, and you can download that code from GitHub and that'll, you know, that you'll be able to create a photosphere then take a, a photograph yourself and, and start uh, that way. And um, there's also lots of other open source, Google have uh, their own code out there, and uh, yeah, just have a look on, on GitHub for, for Google Cardboard stuff, uh, yeah. Thank you. Yeah. So on the barrier of entry, there is a lot of open source code, and you don't need a special device in order to start experimenting with augmented reality or stuff like that. You can do that with a cardboard, you can do that even with your phone today, you can do augmented reality. It's a uh, Google for web AR or come to a future the Blended event. It's all open source and you can find it on GitHub. Or you can run that on run that on any Android phone. So it is really quite easy slope here. That's it. Yep. Okay, I think we're done now. So thanks. It was a great talk.